Jungle. Hello and welcome to the News at Nine. My name is Sarah and today we are going to look at the mistreatment of women in Egypt. Every day, women are battered, beaten, raped, and torn down. Women fear for their safety everywhere they go. We will first begin by watching a short video showing the mistreatment of women in Egypt. We will then turn to Kaija and Jack for more information. The numbers of gang rapes in Egypt has soared, being used as a terror method against women. In the past few days, it has become endemic, rights groups say, with men swarming any women they find in areas of public protest, assaulting them sexually, harassing or raping them. Defenders are also attacked. The intention is dissuasion. The message, don't be here. Human Rights Watch recorded this testimony. They made a very tight circle around me. They started uh, moving their hands all over my body. They touched every inch of my body. They violated every inch of my body. I was so much traumatized, I was only screaming at the time. I couldn't even speak. I couldn't cry help. I was just screaming. This woman says a car was reversed so that it pinned her down by her hair. She says they held my legs and turned me around. They raised my legs and raped me as they wished. Islamist media have been broadcasting Salafist preaching in which women are blamed and other perverse justifications, critics say, since the rise of Islamist political dominance in Egypt after the 2011 Arab Spring. None of the rapists have been prosecuted so far. In February, a member of the Human Rights Committee in the Egyptian parliament said publicly that the women were 100% responsible for being assaulted. This kind of discourse from people in positions of supposed responsibility spreads the mentality. This young man questioned about women and where the fault lies says, It's not a good habit, it's wrong, but they lead us to do this. From the way they dress, from the way they walk, everything. They push Egyptian men to do this. The police and government have proved their impotence against sexual assault. Preventive vigilante groups in Tahrir Square dressed in yellow cannot handle the problem. Experts say the horrendous prevalence of sexual violence runs deep in Egyptian society. NGOs say the government must create a national strategy involving the media and religious and educational institutions to change the men in a country where more than 8 out of 10 women suffer sexual assault and harassment every day. Hello, welcome to tonight's CNN emergency presentation on the treatment of women in Egypt. Tonight I'm with Kaja, the UN United Nations Ambassador to the Gender Equality Commission between Egypt and the United States. And tonight we're going to be looking at and in, looking at in depth how women are treated in Egypt. So Kaja, how long have women been mistreated in Egypt? There's no set time to how long women have been mistreated in Egypt. It's been going on for years and years and decades probably. And it's really only come to the light of everyone in America and everywhere around the world in 2011 recently because a lot of women have finally spoke up and finally actually told their stories and are not afraid anymore to actually express what's been going on. And our organization, we have come to realize that 93.3% of Egyptian women are sexually harassed in one way or another. Now, do you want to? Now, when you say sexually harassed, do you, are these verbal or physical harassments? And can you give some examples for the viewers as to what these kind of harassments these women are facing? How are young women facing and dealing with this issue in Egypt? Young women are actually, they're facing it a lot worse than the older women because younger women are not protected by their mothers and not protected by their families. Many of them are walking around the streets of Egypt and they are just exposed to men and the men can do whatever they want to the women, the younger women. And 95% of them are actually young women. And the ages between, women between the ages of 25 and 29, they experience it a lot worse than the older women. About 35% of women worldwide have faced physical violence from their partners, and about 25.2% of married women are physically abused. However, these statistics cannot be fully accurate because many women do not report the abuse in fear of their husbands 
or partners or in fear of their society they live in. Our presentation on the mistreatment of women on Egypt. I'm still here with Kaja, the UN ambassador, and now we're going to be taking a look at the repercussions from the abuse of women. So Kaja, how are the women's lives in Egypt being affected by this? Their lives are highly affected, actually. In Egypt, a third of women are being sexually harassed by their husbands, sexually abused by their own husbands. So when they come home, it's people that they know who are actually abusing them. And it's not just people off the street. So these women are in fear for their lives, no matter where they are, each day, every day. And domestic violence is a major cause of disability in Egypt, and that's why most of the women have troubles with actually progressing and actually learning, especially the younger women. Now, are there any groups that are of women, demographic-wise, that are more targeted than other groups of women? Actually, yes. The poor and the less educated women, they get targeted more, and they tend to marry at a younger age because they're not as aware or as smarter as the other women. So they get targeted at that age, and they get married to these men, and then these men actually abuse them, and they harass them, and it's throughout the entire marriage. And these women feel like they don't have anywhere to go in their relationships. And these women, they also experience great abuse and they're more likely to get STIs from their own husbands as well because the husbands are not just only abusing their own women, but they're abusing other women outside of their own homes. Are there any groups of demographics of women that aren't affected by this at all? Actually, there isn't. No matter how old you are, no matter where you're from, how much money you have or how much money you don't have in Egypt, all women are targeted. They just have a specific type that they go for, but even if you're 40 years old in Egypt, you still get targeted as a woman and you get sexual harassment. And now we will share the story of a 30-year-old woman who will go unnamed. She says, I was married for about six or seven years and we lived on the roof. He never used to give me money and my friends tried to help financially, but there was only so much they could do. I'm not a well-educated woman, so it wasn't easy finding a job. I used to sell vegetables on the side of the street, and he never worked. He was always on drugs. One night, he tied me to the bed with a laundry rope and electrocuted me with a wire and shaved my head with a blade. I wore a veil to hide my baldness and shame. One day, he came in with a woman and took her to our bedroom, and she lived with us. I had nowhere to go, so I had to accept it. I'm now a prostitute to be able to live and provide for myself. The only way is to sleep around. When people confront me, I'm honest about my lifestyle, but ask them to look at my husband before judging me. Our second story comes from a girl named Noor Han, who is 26 years old. My husband worked at a factory and we have two sons. He always used to cheat and was candid about it. He would always come home saying, Anya Aziz I, in return for giving me food, water, and clothes on my back. One time, he tried to rape me and tore my clothes. I cried and screamed like a deer trying to break free from its predator. That's when my children came into the room. I ran and tried to hide behind the door because I was completely naked. I didn't want them to see their mother in this state. He tried to have sex with me in front of my kids. Then he grabbed my hair and dragged me outside the apartment naked. I was exposed in front of the neighbors. It was very humiliating. I took the kids and stayed at my dad's house for eight months. My husband apologized and bought us a new apartment. At the time, I was fighting with my dad. So later, I moved back in and I realized he tricked me. He only rented the apartment for a year. However, being on bad terms with my dad, I figured I should stay with my husband. However, he constantly beat me and at one point he was going to gouge my eye out. Last time he beat me, I went to the police and when he found out, he beat me like a crazy person. My vision is now somewhat impaired.
they, the women have a certain amount of rights given to the government. What rights do the women in Egypt have? Do they have any rights at all given to them by the government? Women in Egypt, they do have rights, but they don't have as many rights as women do in other countries. Women in Egypt must not only fight for like culture, but they have a lot of laws against them. There are discrimination laws against women in Egypt. And Muslim men in Egypt have an unconditional right to divorce, while women can only divorce by court action. And the foundation survey ranked Egypt as worst of 22 Arab states and countries with regards to women's rights. A man can divorce his wife with no problems and without going to court, while a woman, they have to have strong reasons and they have to actually go to a court, and they must convince the court of law why they should be able to divorce their husbands. And the judge may or may not grant the divorce. So and women, woman what you're describing, women in this country have to go through their husbands for essentially any sort of basic human right. Yes, a Muslim man can marry a non-Muslim woman, but if a woman wants to marry a non-Muslim man, they have to get some rights from their husband first. And if they want to have an abortion, it's illegal unless there's a risk to the mother's life. And even then, the husband has to consent. So a woman can't do anything that's legal without their husband's consent or without actually going to the court. Whereas a man can marry as many women as he wants to, and he can do whatever he wants and whatever he feels. But women. So, is there anything else being done to stop the treatment, the mistreatment of women? Actually, yes. There is Amnesty International, who like they're working on educating younger generations to show that violence to women is unnecessary. Amnesty International also helps to relocate and protect the women. The law falls short. Government and religious groups will go after women to get to men, and Amnesty is trying to make sure that these women who are who they can protect. They're making sure that these women actually won't get abused by their husbands or by any other men. And they have been going out their way to have raised money for these women in Egypt to make sure that this doesn't happen. Because the government doesn't want to help these women and actually create laws against this. So Amnesty decided to create their own within their own organization laws to help these women. Tying this all back to sociology, by definition, sociology is the study of the development, structure, and functioning of human society and the consequence of difference. So it's how people live and how they're judged and their culture and things like that. And relating this mistreatment of women in Egypt to sociology, it is taken a lot more lightly than other cultures in other countries also such as America where we live in America when a woman or even a man is in an abusive relationship if they feel comfortable and strong enough to go get help it their partner is either put away in jail or they are separated and something happens but in Egypt it's not taken as seriously and people don't really find it out of the ordinary it's much more common and it's not as hidden because everyone knows that basically everyone is kind of doing it because it's just how you how women are treated unfortunately the mistreatment of women in Egypt is unfair and out of hand the men are given all the power and they take it and they run with it the women are given no choice but to deal with their lives that they live most of them have nowhere else to go and are forced to stay with their husbands who repeatedly hurt them. It is cruel and unfair that they live in such a world where nothing is being done to save them. People and organizations can reach out and try to help, but unfortunately it is the way of life and we don't see men willing to share power anytime soon. You are now viewing what it is like to walk on a bridge in Egypt with men staring at you, wondering if they will hurt you, having to always look over your shoulder and wondering what will happen next.
Thank you so much for watching and joining us at News at 9 today. We will see you next time.